China's new national security law is tightening Beijing's control over Hong Kong and stifling the protests that rocked the city a year ago. With activists facing imprisonment, pro-democracy candidates disqualified from elections and even a media mogul detained by security police, are we seeing the end of one country, two systems? This law will restore stability to Hong Kong. This law will ensure that this very important principle of one country, two systems can continue. The Chinese government is tightening its grip on Hong Kong with the enactment of a national security law that has ignited protests Everyone. and sparked an international backlash. We implemented visa restrictions on those responsible for the Hong Kong crackdown. The sweeping legislation was imposed a year after massive street protests rocked the city. Protesters said they were fighting for democracy. Beijing supporters described them as rioters and secessionists. We're going to sit there and wring our hands and say, sorry, we have no law against secession. No, you must enact it to protect the whole of China. Since the enactment of the national security law, some protest slogans have been censored. A newsroom raided, its founder detained. Activists have been arrested. Pro-democracy candidates disqualified from running in Legislative Council elections. And then the polls themselves postponed for a year. Activists who have vowed to stay the course say there's very little room left to maneuver. The most challenging issue is how to overcome the fear in our heart. Compared to the threats from Beijing, more important is how to deal with the fear. Britain lowered its flag for the last time in Hong Kong on the 30th of June, 1997. At midnight, the city ceased to be a crown colony and became a special administrative region of the People's Republic of China. Under an agreement lodged with the United Nations, Hong Kong would now be governed by an arrangement known as One Country, Two Systems. Deng Xiaoping's formula was the lifestyle in Hong Kong shall remain unchanged for 50 years. Hong Kong people ruling Hong Kong. Within hours of the handover, Martin Lee, also known as Hong Kong's father of democracy, was on the streets. This group of people are very patriotic. They support the return of Hong Kong to China, but they also want to see democracy in China and democracy in Hong Kong. Today, Lee believes Beijing is trying to shut him up. He and 14 other activists have been charged for taking part in illegal assemblies. They were arrested in April, weeks before the announcement of the national security law. The root of disturbance in Hong Kong is the Chinese Communist Party destroying, interfering with one country, two system. They want to change Deng Xiaoping's policy. I don't agree. So I become a traitor in their eyes. They call me a traitor. What have I done? They have been breaking agreements. If the people into prison, not my fault. Their fault. A group gathering of more than eight people is not allowed in this venue. Offenders are subject to prosecution. Since 1990, Hong Kong's Victoria Park has played host to the annual June 4th vigil, held to remember those who died in the Tiananmen Square crackdown of 1989. But police banned the gathering this year, 
citing restrictions imposed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Organizers of the memorial moved the event online, but gathered unofficially at the park. By early evening, thousands of supporters had joined them in defiance of the ban. The imminent implementation of the national security law was on many people's minds. Will they close down our whole organization to silence all of us? Of course, we, I, we as a leader, uh, we will be, jail, be in jail under the national security. And of course, we have to be prepared. Former student leader Nathan Law was among the crowd in what was likely his last act of civil disobedience in Hong Kong. He fled the city shortly before the national security law came into effect. The sole purpose of the national security law is to um, eradicate all the freedom of speech and freedom of assembly, freedom of thought. We are the predominant target of the government. So actually we are all worried about our own safety. Under Article 23 of Hong Kong's constitution, the basic law, the region has to enact national security legislation. But when the government tried to do so in 2003, hundreds of thousands of Hong Kongers took to the streets, fearing such a law would erode their freedoms. The bill was ultimately withdrawn. No further attempt was made to reintroduce it even though pro-Beijing politicians have always controlled the Legislative Council. They know in the hearts of Hong Kong people are opposed to them. They don't want to suffer loss of reputation and also loss of votes. The chief executive too didn't want to do it. Chief executive wants to keep a good reputation with Hong Kong people. In 2019, massive protests gripped Hong Kong following the introduction of yet another controversial bill. Chief Executive Kerry Lam wanted to amend the city's extradition law. Opponents feared doing so would allow the Chinese government to demand that Hong Kong hand over activists or dissidents living in or even just passing through the city. The demonstrations continued even after the bill was withdrawn. Among other things, protesters called for electoral reform and an investigation into alleged police brutality. Not everyone was peaceful. The unrest and alleged foreign interference were cited as key reasons for the national security law. We believe that outside forces or resources supporting a movement which may aim at subverting uh, the rule of China over Hong Kong or the rule of the Hong Kong government. So we had to plug the loophole. When you talk about outside forces, is this based on a belief or is there evidence? Hmm. I think the central government has evidence. I'm not in the uh, intelligence service. The central government approved the national security law a day before the 23rd anniversary of Hong Kong's handover to China. Outside Hong Kong government headquarters, supporters celebrated. But virtually no one in the region had seen a draft of the legislation. It had all been decided in Beijing with no input from Hong Kong's Legislative Council. Hong Kong's national security law can only be passed by the Hong Kong legislature according to the, the basic law, which is a mini constitution. So what they're doing is unconstitutional. The responsibility 
and the power of enacting such a law and implementing it is strictly a matter for the central government. The full text of the law was only released when it took effect, one hour before the 1st of July. The new legislation criminalizes four acts, secession, subversion, terrorism, and collusion with a foreign country or external elements to endanger national security. Penalties include life imprisonment. It allows Chinese agents to operate openly in Hong Kong without being answerable to local authorities. Certain cases can be transferred to the mainland for trial. This was exactly what protesters were trying to prevent when they opposed the extradition law amendment bill last year. According to Article 38, the new legislation applies to anyone, anywhere in the world. Yes, this is a piece of law that is, um, is broader than you know, we would hope. But then again, though, this law needs to be enforced in Hong Kong. I still have to go through the judiciary system in Hong Kong. So, so the due process is still there. They could have introduced the mainland national security law to Hong Kong, but they didn't. They specifically draft a new law catered to Hong Kong. And that shows that how much they still want the two system to work. At the ceremony marking the anniversary of the handover, there was a similar message. We invited the Chinese government to explain this further and respond to criticisms of the new law, but they didn't reply. Out on the streets, protesters were skeptical and defiant. One guy already has been arrested today simply by having a Hong Kong independence flag in his backpack. I mean, this is what authoritarian state looks like. This is what this is what tyranny uh, looks like. And we, when, when we are fighting for democracy, uh, it is something we need to overcome. Police arrested some 370 people that day, 10 in connection with a new national security law. Every single one of us are taking a far greater risk than before in coming out. According to the law, it's so broad that it can classify any act as uh, uh, subversion or even uh, terrorism, spreading hatred towards the government can, uh, can be seen as a, uh, a threat to national security. Um, so that is why we are talking about thought police. Still, on July the 1st, protesters insisted on speaking their minds. Traditionally, only a small minority of Hong Kongers supported independence from China. But such slogans had become increasingly popular in recent weeks. We will grant BNO's five years limited leave to remain with the right to work or study. Britain reacted to the new law by promising some three million eligible Hong Kongers a pathway to citizenship. Over in the United States, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced a series of measures. We implemented visa restrictions on those responsible for the Hong Kong crackdown. On Monday, uh, we announced that we would end defense equipment and dual-use technology exports 
of U.S. origin going to the territory. We will continue to implement President Trump's directive to end Hong Kong's special status. Under that directive, Hong Kong would no longer be treated differently from mainland China or enjoy certain benefits that came with its special status. The new developments raised questions about the city's future as a global financial center. All these companies are here because of China. So this piece of law will not scare them. If they don't want to do business with China, so they shouldn't even be in Hong Kong. So they want to be here, but they don't want to be caught in, you know, in this whole um, tension between the US and China. To a certain extent, we are a pawn, I think, uh, at the middle of this whole uh, trade war between the US and China. For protesters, the impact of the new legislation was quickly felt. At this protest, blank paper replaced posters and banners. Days earlier, the government had implied that a popular slogan, Liberate Hong Kong, Revolution of Our Times, was illegal under the national security law. But even this relatively low-key indoor gathering was considered illegal. Several protesters were arrested. Is there a reason that they stopped her? They, they don't need reason. They are police. When they want to stop and search, they can stop and search. They have the authority. Hong Kong is a police city now. For Hong Kong's most famous activist, the new law marked the beginning of a new reality. Being stopped by some of the Chinese agent or the political unit of Hong Kong police force is the things that I didn't imagine in the past. When more than four private cars with motorcycle stalk me for the whole afternoon, I can't guarantee my personal safety, especially when we'll be extradited to China, uh, when we'll be facing life sentence, or is there any risk to be prosecuted in China's or Beijing's court? Just before the enactment of the national security law, Joshua Wong announced that he was leaving Demosisto, the political organization he co-founded with Nathan Law. The group disbanded soon after, and Law fled Hong Kong. The high degree of autonomy once promised is just another blatant lie. He went on to testify before the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee. Beijing turns Hong Kong into just another Chinese city while trying to keep its outer shell. In doing so, it hopes to preserve the illusion that the city is still autonomous. The international community must not be confused. The two had announced plans earlier to run in the Legislative Council elections in September. Joshua Wong stayed behind and continued his campaign. Pro-democratic M in Hong Kong wish to take majority in the Hong Kong Legislative Council. Legislative Council of Hong Kong should not be the place gathering Beijing loyalists. It should be the place gathering the voice of people. Hong Kong's pro-democracy camp has never controlled the Legislative Council, despite winning the popular vote in every election since the handover. Election rules are stacked in the favor of their pro-Beijing opponents. But this year, they hoped to change things by selecting the strongest candidates via an unofficial primary. It was the day before the vote, and police had just raided offices belonging to organizers of the primary. A government official had also warned that the poll might contravene the national security law. 
This is an attempt, I would say, to stop the people of Hong Kong of expressing their own dissent. They foolishly think that with this draconian legislation, people in Hong Kong will just shut up. The turnout exceeded the democratic camp's hopes for 170,000 people. By the end of the day, some 600,000 Hong Kongers had cast their votes. But two weeks later, 12 pro-democracy candidates were barred from running in the elections. Joshua Wong was one of them. He was accused of, among other things, soliciting interference from foreign governments. Prior to the enactment of the national security law, Wong had urged governments in the US and Europe to impose sanctions on China and various officials. From the 18 pages evidence provided by the electoral offices, it seems to be the evidence that they generated with misleading propaganda and interpretation to prosecute me soon with national security law. But no matter what happened, I still have hope and trust on Hong Kong people we will still find a way out. Gwyneth Ho was also disqualified for opposing the national security law. Like Joshua Wong, she'd emerged as a front runner following the primary elections. I don't know what will happen again tomorrow. Maybe I'll get arrested tomorrow. Maybe my campaign members will be arrested tomorrow. I do think the result of the democratic primaries is a shock to the Communist Party to the Beijing government. They thought that by using the national security law that the candidates will back down, that the people will be very afraid to actually vote for the opposition camp. On the 31st of July, the government postponed Legislative Council elections by a year, citing risks linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. The decision to postpone the 2020 electoral election has nothing to do with politics, has nothing to do with the likely outcome of this round of elections. On the 7th of August, the United States announced that it was sanctioning Carrie Lam and 10 other Chinese and Hong Kong officials for undermining Hong Kong's autonomy. Three days later, police arrested media tycoon Jimmy Lai, owner of the popular pro-democracy newspaper, Apple Daily. I did not expect them to arrest me this quickly. I expected eventually they will, they will have to arrest me. Uh, because when the national security law came out, the whole Western world, as you know, I think the whole international community really had a very strong response against this. The same afternoon, some 200 police raided the Apple Daily building. We don't know what exactly that they collected from here uh, as, say, materials for their investigations. Uh, we hope it, 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 it doesn't involve any, uh, anything related to uh, reporters' work and reporting. Inside the building, an Apple journalist live streamed the raid. Capturing the moment, Jimmy Lai returned to the newsroom in handcuffs. Also arrested were his two sons and several company executives. Lai was being investigated for colluding with foreign powers. Collusion has to be defined as action. If I just talk to a, a politician in U.S. without colluding to do something to subvert my country or to destroy my country, whatever, I don't see how this could be a collusion. <laughs> Jimmy Lai was released on bail two days later to a media scrum and a chanting crowd. Supporters had snapped up hundreds of thousands of copies of Apple Daily, placed ads inside and bought the company's stock. People see us as a symbol of standing up to power and they need 
people to stand up to power at this time of crisis. It was overwhelming. By August the 15th, more than 20 people had been arrested under Hong Kong's national security law. Among them, activist Agnes Chow. Is a broader crackdown imminent? One activist, at least, says he's ready. OK, if I die in, in prison, so what? A man has to die. Somehow, somewhere. I have a free conscience. I'm at peace. <laughs>